Greetings, comrades, and welcome to the Eastern Border. Now, our national celebration, Yani, has passed, and so has uh, the Intelligence Speech uh, Conference, of which I had the honor of participating in. I wanted to say special thanks to all the organizers, which is Pontifax Podcast, uh, Wittenberg to Westphalia, and uh, I'm pretty sure I forgot someone, but I, I definitely know these two were among the organizers. These were excellent, um, excellent folks. And although, well, my own presentation uh, went a bit weird since we had a heat wave over here in Latvia. And when I arrived at home, turns out that, uh, yeah, if, if in a massive summer heat, which was about plus 35 degrees Celsius or about 86 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit for you Americans out there, if you have a, if you have a tiny apartment with white walls and you leave your windows open, Sorry, well, unclosed by curtains, I mean, and uh, your apartment sits in the heat. Yeah, gets pretty rough. I am barely, you know, able to record right now after I spent a whole day after that conference just ventilating everything as much as I could. <laughs> so that was a bit weird. Also, I'd like to give special thank, a special thank you to History of Bulgaria podcast and History of Georgia podcast with whom we held a kind of common, common presentation, which was... Well, actually quite nice, although, well, that was uh, not enough time definitely to talk about everything that we wanted to talk about. And while in this heat and, well, throughout everything, I am preparing some larger episodes, today I wanted to give you some, uh, well, more news, because we have, again, quite a lot to talk about. First of all, the administration of Mariupol, the Ukrainian one, has uh, sort of calculated the amount of losses that uh, that they have had in this war, and apparently 22,000 people have died in Mariupol. 22,000 people out of uh, out of a city of about 400,000. That's that's crazy and sad. Which is just just a bit insane, really. At the same time, Microsoft reports that pro-Russian hackers have attacked 128 organizations in 42 countries after the beginning of this war. Besides Ukraine, in the second place of all these attacks, uh, they have been targeted against the USA. No surprise there, since USA has proven itself to be a staunch ally of Ukraine, so, of course, they're suffering, really. The uh, International Organization of Civil Aviation thinks that um, in Russia... There is a problem with the safety of, of local flights. And uh, this is because Russian planes have been basically registered in the registers of various countries. And their planes have been started to basically fall with crazy, uh, crazy regularity. Like, I guess it was two days ago during our national celebration where one of their transport planes also just managed to crash. Like I said because of uh, the lack of their repair parts and because of all the bureaucratic mess that's happening over there. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend taking regional flights inside Russia right now or, well, anywhere if you can, like I guess Turkey or, or Serbia or something with um, without a float or anything like that. The United Kingdom have announced about creating a new way of sanctions against Russia, which include additional additional targets in the spheres of technologies and, well, oil, oil the, the oil kind of uh, industry as well, and some other, well, very kind of fundamental industries and uh, kind of se sectors of economics. They have also forbidden to um, forbidden for the pound to be exported to Russia, and then, and then only pound all the banknotes of all the countries of EU. Because, you know, there's quite a few of us here who don't use euro. Latvia uses euro, but for example, Romania, oh no, Romania I think does, Mold Moldova isn't an EU, EU country just yet, uh, I certainly know Poland doesn't use euros, and Hungary doesn't use euros, and Sweden, so, you know, quite a few of them. Czech Republic have decided that will not be granting visas and temporary permits of permanent residents to the citizens of Russia and Belarus up until the end of March 2023 which makes, you know, their immigration quite quite more difficult. Although, you know, some people in Russian opposition have stated that um 
this might not be as good as they think it is because this does not allow the opposition uh, the opposition people the russian liberals to leave the country where they're persecuted the thing is that i'll be writing another article for foreign policy magazine very soon where i'll take a look at the russian liberals and their opposition media since they are not exactly so white and clean as they would like to present themselves and there's you know uh, some part of them uh, some part of the responsibility for everything that's happening lies on them as well which is well quite not obvious it's not trivial finnish uh, finnish finnish uh, producer of various paints tikkurila is now announced that they're leaving russia and this just joins up with the huge list of various corporations and companies that are leaving russian markets right now and um, this has also have created some side effects for example the the producers of carbonized drinks in russia have basically found themselves in a position where they lack they lack co2 in about 10% they have a shortage of about 10 to 15% which can increase which means that carbonated soft drinks in russia will become even more expensive even though you know by now they have at least what five different different replacements of coca-cola which obviously doesn't taste the same way and i know that one of them is strictly orthodox filled up in beer bottles and you know this was the first time ever that i saw a a coca-cola bottle with the virgin mary on it uh, it's oh it's in there in my twitter which you should definitely follow since we're trying to reach twenty thousand followers there it's at eastern underscore border and there you'll the, the, there you can see like all these weird pictures of the things that i mentioned here and um, another thing about russian economy is that the russian government has basically approved approved of a potential bill of the russian economical min- of the russian ministry of economy which would allow the banks to put uh, negative uh, negative deposit ratios on on the deposits of of com- of various businesses which are kept in foreign currencies which means that you wouldn't get interest it would be like negative interest rates so you know you would have to pay for you would have to pay if you were a co- would be a company and you want would want to keep an account in say dollars or euros in the russian banks this is just another nice little way of making sure that the companies sell their dollars or euros or whatever in and to the government the russian government because they are trying to acquire and accrued as much foreign currency as they can get another clear victim victim in this war is uh, Russian ecology. The Insider, the media corp, writes about all the matters that um, Russian Greenpeace organization and ecology organizations in general have just, you know, compiled and are presenting. There's a bunch of new, bunch of new basically destructive, destructive measures that, uh, that sadly are, are being done to, that to, to sort of help businesses but that would just increase corruption inside Russia that will hurt massively uh, that would hurt Russian ecology just massively first of all a new bill which basically is combined by the ministry of economy and ministry of defense allows the allows the military to basically cut down and chop down forests in any any possible quantities as long as they can claim that this is for the needs of defense and this is to such a level that if military wants to cut out cut uh, down a bunch of public forests basically this is uh, and they don't even need to announce that to the local governors of regions where they're cutting down the forests basically this means that if you're a colonel in some random region in siberia then you know you're going to be sending a bunch of your soldiers bunch of your conscripts to just chop chop off as as much forest as you possibly can and then pack it up and set it to china or india or whatever where you'll sell it for defense needs because the money will obviously not you know go to any actual defense projects it will most likely just slip into the pockets of the officers and uh, basically for for so that so as to save the the auto industry of of russia 
the government has allowed to basically give uh basically allowed them to produce auto automobiles of any ecological class even euro zero which basically this is the ecological standard that was adopted by the eu countries most countries of europe in the basically 80s in in comparison to euro five which was there what uh, which was there just before the war in russia the the concentration of uh, the concentration of all sorts of pollutants will increase and in, will just basically triple and this this obviously will lead to eventual increase in various oncological oncological diseases another another initiative the activists have called the killer of the baikal biosphere and if you know a thing or two about baikal then yeah that's uh, that's pretty bad basically um, they Baikal already had a lot of problems. It's a self-cleaning system, but in the Soviet era they had started to basically basically pollute it a lot because uh, that, because various factories which are found nearby just basically dumped their waste in uh, Baikal and uh, the rivers that feed it. So parts of Baikal weren't actually as pure as one would imagine. This got fixed for a while, and. Um, for a while, the situation started to improve because you know nature has a way to clean itself. Right now, the local local government is trying to kind of make sure that these regulations are no longer in power once again, and this will allow to just drop uh, drop into Baikal anything that contains chloro uh, chlo chloro organical chloro organical substances, dioxides, and DDTs. Basically, yeah, there's going to be a nice little permission to pollute Baikal up once again. Also, this uh, hurts science as well, because one of our world's neutrino detectors is inside Lake Baikal. So, that all is going to be just bizarre. And the situation before all this all this wasn't, wasn't even perfect either, since in one of my episodes in 2018, I think, or it was 2019, I made an episode where the local Academy of Sciences had, um, had basically found that the ecological situation with the pollution of air had been ridiculously terrible in Russia, but they refused to kind of refuse to allow it to be announced publicly because that could hurt Putin's chances and that would basically annoy him. But right now even such well sort of private investigations won't be able to happen just so the destruction of ecology could be left in, in the darkness. Uh, in the Kremlin they have decided to basically just cancel any public ecological expertise, uh, public ecological investigations. Oh, again, again, I'm sorry if I sound uh, not as well as usual, because it's still a massive heat wave here. But back to the point. Ecological, ecological investigations, independent ones, which would, you know, write reports about the situation in this area, well, yeah, they'll be no longer allowed to be done by just civilians or any public organizations or any foreign agents. And let me remind you that literally anyone in Russia can now be declared a foreign agent. These um, ecological ecological investigations and ecological kind of creations of probes and about the situation, yeah, only the regional regional governments, that is the governors and the local parliaments and all that stuff, will be able to do them legally. That is, which means that if you decide to go outside, if you go, if you want to go outside Moscow and just you know measure the quality of air and then maybe write a paper on it, yeah, that will now be illegal in Russia. Which is quite crazy if you think about it, but uh, hey, not like that's the first thing that's illegal in Russia these days. Russia's also managing to anger um, a lot of historians and all sorts of, all sorts of people because they're not they're not really kind to everyone out uh, everyone outside Russia and they really don't like their unfriendly nations see on the orders from Russia's ministry of culture the polish flag has been taken away from the Katyn war cemetery outside Smolensk the the mayor of Smolensk Andrei Borisov explained that quote there can be no flags of Poland at Russian memorials ex especially after openly anti-Russian statements by Polish politicians. Now the thing is the memorial site contained r the remnants of more than four uh, four thousand four hundred captured Polish officers who were murdered in 1940 
in what is known as the Katyn Massacre. Which, by the way, Soviet officials denied responsibility for the killings of until 1990. And, um, well, this also served as, um, as a reason of death for one of the Polish presidents, since, tja, in one of the visits to Katyn, basically, Polish president and a um, whole bunch of their govern government officials also managed to die in, um, well, weird circumstances. This just makes it a bit worse. But in general, well, on the war front, we, al we also have some, some news here. See, the Ukrainian troops are withdrawing from Severodonetsk. Luhansk governor, Sergei Haidai, stated that Ukrainian forces were ordered to withdraw from the city of Severodonetsk. And this is one of the ways how to cut the front, because apparently the losses of Ukrainians have been great in this area. This governor stated that on Thursday, June 23, Russia has captured most of the region and, according to Haidai, sent, quote, all reserves, and quote, to storm Severodonetsk and the Zolotye Choshevka area south of Lyshansk. The situation, apparently, in this region is extremely difficult. Russian forces advancing from Toshkiva, which was captured a bit earlier, took control of the villages Rai Oleksandrivka and Lyohustivka on Wednesday. Russian troops are now on the verge of encircling Ukrainian positions in the towns of Zolotoye and Hirse. Which means that um, Ukrainian forces are doing quite wisely to actually withdraw from these areas as to stop their encirclement. And this is kind of a weird situation here because there were, so there were huge fights for this area and a lot of shelling and everything happens over there. And I really don't think that any encirclement will happen. But, well, this just means that we're probably going to move away from this whole structural war with massive casualties on both sides without any movements. What could, what could help Ukraine would be massive weapons, weapons shipments right now, which would be extremely helpful, and I think with the arrival of new HIMARS systems and more, uh, more various artillery, Ukrainians will certainly uh, regain their lost ground, and I highly doubt that this is the end of this. There's a lot of reports also that Ukrainian, the Ukrainian army is just, you know, preparing for a counterattack, which I find truthful, and that Russian war machine might have exhausted itself. I wouldn't be that optimistic about the second one, since I do believe that, you know, if they do some partial mobilization or something, then they can throw even more men at the problem. However, as I've mentioned before, I think that when the winter comes, then the logistics will start to hurt them even more, and then we'll, we might actually see some interesting turning points of this war. And, um, yeah, of course, I'll be monitoring the situation and posting news updates whenever I get something interesting or important. We're not leaving all of this alone, of course. So, please follow us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook, The Eastern Border. You can just Google, out, Google us up and follow us that way. Please consider becoming our Patreon. That helps the show immensely. And, um, well... If you if you don't like to hear ads on this show, you can always listen to our show from the Eastern Border homepage. No ads there. Also, you can you can just uh, if you want to help us with one time payment, you can also also just go to the Eastern Border homepage and click the donate button over there. Uh, the link to our Patreon is also there, and we're working on some upgrades. So you know, if you care to help the show and you want to support us, please do that. Of course, donate to Ukrainian charity. Comebacklive.ua is still my favorite one. Das Vidanya, Tvarish. And remember, happiness is mandatory.